Hello, everyone. My name is Asia, and I'm a customer experience associate over at Switcher Studio. And I'm excited to have you guys here today. Uh, we welcome to the Made with Switcher uh, Facebook Live event. All of our Switcher creators are using Switcher Studio in such creative ways. This series is all about bringing you, our creators, together to share stories and grow together. This week's guests are from Singapore and have been using Switcher Studio to live stream pet adoption events. Let me introduce the Switcher creator, Cephas, and um, sorry, Cephas Chen, live stream director at Cactus Singapore, and Melody Ten, for a founder of Hope for Animals. Welcome, Hi. Cephas and Hi. Melody. <laughs> We're so excited to have you. Yeah, the dogs are so excited to be here. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Before we dive in, please share any comments or questions for us in the comments. We will be answering you in later later this live stream. Guys, thank you so much for coming in today. I just have a, a couple questions for you guys. Uh, how did this collective collaboration between Cactus Singapore and Hope for Animals begin? Um, I think it was like when, when the pandemic started, because Hope for Animals used to run the event, um, we used to tie in together with a lot of animal shelters to hold events where com where we invite different shelters in. But uh, because of COVID-19, we had some issues and we really needed to find a way to make things work. Uh, being from a creative background, but nothing in video or live streaming, uh, I actually just shared inside a group on Facebook whether anyone is keen to work with us about this idea of a live streaming concept. My partner actually just shared the idea, so we just thought, you know what the hell, I'll just share it. And I think <laughs> that's where we actually met up with Seth and Madeline, who were the first uh, few to actually like join the entire team. Yeah. <laughs> this join too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah so um, <laughs> yeah, I just happened to be, I mean, it's a Facebook group for uh, sort of creative uh, freelance artists. So everyone was trying to, you know, support one another, trying to see uh, how we can help one another get through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then at back then, Cactus Singapore was also just starting out. We were trying to find projects that we can uh, handle and just you know, test out our setups and <laughs> equipment and make sure everything mm -hmm. runs well and get more practice in the live streaming area. So yeah, just so happened that I saw her post. So we decided to, okay, why not lend a hand? Yeah. yeah. Actually, we did meet like before, but mm. uh, it was more of like a, a event that we met. It, we just uh -huh. didn't come to like or like oh we could actually work things out together. So yeah. the entire group was basically consists of strangers. <laughs> like we all didn't know <laughs> each other at all, and then we all came to to just do this for the pet industry. And also, I think like during the pandemic, uh, it helps us mentally as well. Because when you're giving mm -hmm. back to society right. and everything, you do feel mentally a little bit more better because you are using your time and effort to help others as well. Mm -hmm. So somehow yeah. rather, yeah, I think somehow rather that's how we actually form the group. Yeah. That's cool. Speaking of which, how many volunteers um, do you have helping you? So, yeah, so we started <laughs> with like, um, I think 50. And then after that, we went wow. down to about, when we went up to our second and the third season, we, we scaled down to, I think, about 20, 30 plus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. Because the thing is that sometimes once, uh, our season two and season three, some of them started getting jobs. Uh, so they were right, yeah. really as involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the one amazing thing is that uh, some of uh, us, we are still able to, you know, manage our time. It's not very easy, but we still try to make mm -hmm. things work. So that's why we got season two and three. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah, awesome. I guess the, yeah, um, the first season when I think we had one episode per week. Yes, that was <laughs> yeah. every week. Literally every wow. Week. Uh, and that was during the lockdown. That's so crazy. we had plenty of time to do so. But I think as season two and three went on, right. we decided to scare it down to maybe just once every two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> um, how many episodes have you done in total and what has been the response been? Let me see. 13 episodes, season <laughs> one, season two, 10 episodes. Now we have four, okay, about 27 episodes so far. Wow. You know, that's that's exciting. Exciting. I, I can, like, you know, <laughs> remember. That's so great. Uh, has, have you gotten pretty good response from people watching? Yeah, actually, um, so that's the amazing part. So yeah, we our season one, we had quite a lot of uh, uh, viewers watching us during the live. Uh, season two was equally just as well. Um, and mm -hmm. we have 
at, at the point of time of season two, we had, I think, 70 to 80% of the pets gotten adopted. And then since mm. now we are at season three. Uh, our live viewing is not as uh, much as the first and second season part. We realized mm. there were a lot of people that rewatched the video after. So it is, even though our current viewing is uh, not as high, but the after after the live and then the video is kept on Facebook, right? Uh, there were a mm. lot of people that rewatched it after that. So the, the amount of pets that got adopted is still relatively high. Uh, the one good wow. thing we noticed is that it really brought the community together. So say for mm. example, when somebody wanted to adopt a pet, they have a question, uh, our MCs try to answer them. But actually, mm. there were a lot of people in the comment section that actually reply them as well. So that's when we realized that it's also bringing the community together. That's so cool. I'm so excited for you guys. It's so great. Um, we want to take a little break to um, show you guys a, a video uh, for those of you that might be joining that just explains a little bit about this. Uh, but remember to leave your comments and questions and we'll be happy to uh, reply later in the video. Let's see. All right, well, we can get started on the next questions. Uh, where do you produce your live stream? Uh, it's a mixture of different venues. Uh, currently, most of our live streams are produced at my studio right over here. So, um, I mean, it really depends on the animals we are bringing on the show. So for some of our animals, they are actually uh, not suited to be brought out of the shelter. So we actually did a few of our episodes at the shelters itself. Um, some of it was, I think one of it was at a swimming pool. Yes, adult <laughs> yeah, swimming adult pool. swimming pool. Yeah, yeah so we, we were able to stream from a variety of different locations depending on uh, the who we are featuring. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. Basically, mm. every every single episode we see, whether it's dogs, cats, or buddies, and then if in the event certain shelters, they don't have the manpower to come out. Um, so we I think Seth actually does the site recce before we actually go down to also set up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really cool, though. I, I love all the locations. Those are so fun. Um, can you tell us about a little bit of your setup uh, for those productions? Uh, OK. So I mean, uh, if it's in the studio, generally, we just work with uh, this sofa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we work on this nice. box. Right. So uh, yeah, that's, that's our studio. So generally, it's always like a sort of a three static angle kind of setup with one roving. Uh, the idea is that we want to really give our viewers an up-close look at the animals that they are looking to adopt. So the roving angle will provide a very close-up view. Uh, and also, mm -hmm. hopefully, like the if there's any little quirky things that they, they do, we are able to also bring it up on screen. Yeah. So generally, we operate with like, a team of three, um, one on the audio, one hand managing a live stream and one person will be doing the roving angle so yeah then i mean if it's outside on location then we have to factor in like okay the internet stability and that's when uh i will use like a video go just to do some network bonding and make sure that the reception is good yeah <laughs> so that's generally cool. i'll set up that's a impressive <laughs> forward, i guess yeah <laughs> yeah that's yeah. cool that you're able to uh, configure based on uh, you know where you are, what your setting is. It's really cool. Um, yeah. Melody, how has this process of live streaming the events changed your approach to getting these animals adopted? Do you think you'll continue live streaming as things begin to reopen? Oh, uh, I think we still are. So even though when things are opening right now, we still continue to live stream because we still don't. Uh, I think our government does not encourage uh, big scale events at this point of time. So the live stream, mm -hmm. one thing good is that it helps pets that are afraid of crowds. So like for an oh, example, yeah. Even if, yeah, so even if we have an event, right, uh, and mm -hmm. certain dogs or cats, even bunnies, because bunnies, they're actually not um, acceptable to crowds. Uh, mm. In this type of scenario, the live stream really works because you sh you kind of see their personality without all these factors in. So those pets that are harder to get adopted during events because of their anxiety, the live stream actually helps because it actually shows who they are personally at home or in a more comfortable environment where there isn't much um, distractions. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I guess as we, I mean, we start the events or this, there's still a limitation on number of people we can invite. Right. Yeah. So we are actually just having the live stream to complement the event so that we can get more people involved. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Seth, has it been challenging working with animals? I'm asking you this while you're holding a puppy. That's so cute. <laughs> uh, has, it been cha- <laughs> has it been challenging working with animals? Uh, how's your team adapted for more frequent live streams? Mm, okay, for animals, wise, generally, I, I find that most animals are quite easy to work with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they, they are comfortable with their handlers, their fosterers. Uh, mm. I think the most challenging ones are the cats. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, the cats will really explore my studio and really wander everywhere, do my zooming <laughs> rag, behind, behind the setup. Oh, and underneath the sofa. Yeah, underneath the sofa. So one of the episodes we have That's a cat so just, just stuck there for, for throughout the whole episode, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> refusing to come out. <laughs> yeah. That's I, so I guess, funny. I mean, most of them are quite all right. Even like, the hamsters, we, yeah. you actually managed to shoot really well. Yeah, so for even animals as small as wow. hamsters, we are able to showcase them as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, hamsters are just in like a cage, yeah. but some of them, they come out mm-hmm. and then like he's adapted to the entire thing. Like. So literally almost every pet. I mean, there was one episode we had on birds as well. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. And our upcoming episode, we are going to have ants. So... <laughs> <laughs> all kinds, all kinds. Yeah, I'm, I'm still wondering how all to manage kinds. the end part. Yeah, we have a That's so crazy. <laughs> and, and breeder, and farmer. Like and community. <laughs> yeah, and community. So how, <laughs> how are we going to feature something? Yeah, we will figure Would, it out. <laughs> do you think that's probably your uh, your most unique um, pet that you've showcased is ants? <laughs> I think so. I think so, yeah. Upcoming episode. <laughs> this Sunday, this Sunday. Yeah, that will be it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, we'd like to take a little bit of time to answer any questions that we have uh, from people in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let's see if there's anything. What kind of animals do you uh, do you give to adoptions only dogs? I guess we um, talked a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, it's not just dogs. So we cover like dogs, cats, rabbits, hamsters. Uh, although we did not have any pets, um, uh, any birds up for adoption, we did cover a little bit about how to care for them and what are the certain mm-hmm. things to look out for. So like for mm-hmm. an example, this Sunday's episode, we it's not ants up for adoption, but it's about how you build your own ant colony. Yeah, pronounce that correctly? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ant colony and how you look Very after cool. them and etc. Yeah, so although it's not all types of pets up for adoption, we actually talk about <laughs> Uh, about how to care for them. <laughs> yeah, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's something new for us as well. Like, I only just gotten to know it last year. And I think mm. uh, yeah. when we share it, it says it was like, <laughs> and So it's a new concept, but there are people that actually uh, really look after ants. And it's quite interesting because I have a phobia of ants. And <laughs> this is happening. Yeah, I don't really like bugs in general, but I, <laughs> the first thought that came to my mind was, I hope the ants don't spill out. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And that, that's just like a totally new category for me. <laughs> Let's see. How do you couple people as a guest and how to do it? Uh, yeah, guys, if you are wondering, um, Seth and Mel are all the way over in Singapore, and I am not. <laughs> so we're using um, Remote Guests, uh, which is a feature on Switcher Studios um, um, software, uh, where you can allow guests from all over, um, anyone that's remote, uh, into your into your live streams. Up to five seats are available, so uh, we just have one extra seat going on right now. Um, and actually, um, we have someone that's helping us with our, our um, live stream who's also remote. So I'm actually technically a guest. So I guess technically there's two uh, guest seats right now. Um, but it's really cool. It allows you to do things like this, uh, to connect with creators that are not with you uh, uh, locally. So it's very cool. Yeah, something but, I can add um, on that. Cause, yeah. Uh, our entire season one, except for the first episode, was done through video chat. So yeah, if you wow, take a look that's at awesome. for animals, the videos, yeah, then it was mm-hmm. done during a lockdown. So we yes. had to uh, right. organize the our hosts, <laughs> our our guest mm-hmm. speakers, and even showcase the pets all through video chat. Yeah, and yeah. that was definitely like I think one of the most challenging period because yes. 
mm-hmm. we initially planned for a live stream then after that circuit breaker um, uh, lockdown happened and then we had mm-hmm. to like okay let's quickly adapt we need to adapt this one way or another so and the dogs are all in separate areas so there was another headache and we need to i think Seth need to test like, everybody's internet connection and the camera angle the lighting everything so i think that yeah. took a lot of like um, yeah <laughs> arrangement yeah yeah we had a lot of technical difficulty with that but we made it through yeah, yeah. right <laughs> Well, that's really impressive, you guys, to <laughs> figure out how to adapt to the situations. Uh, is there anything that either of you would like to add before we hop off here? Mm. I'm not very good with last words. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, that's like, so uh, funny. Yeah, it, most of the time when this happens, no matter how often this happens and people ask me this question, I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm not, like, but, uh, no, I, I <laughs> Well, I hope our, our sharing has uh will be able to help more people trying to achieve yeah. what we did. Uh, help the shelters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hopefully hopefully yeah. uh more animals get uh, adopted. I, I'm always watching, yeah. you know, the the juju the doo doo. The doo doo page. Doo-doo. Yeah, yeah the doo doo Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always watching the videos over there and I, I love uh all, all the stories about pets. That's animals. awesome. So, yeah. Oh yeah. so, yeah, so like, sweet. Hopefully, this can be adapted to other countries because I'm very sure other countries are facing the same issue. And right. I don't think that um, pets should be any less of a concern. Um, it's, mm-hmm. still, it's still something for people to actually take note of and to help. And it's in, uh, basically an essential. So hopefully what we do or what we have started, hopefully it, it gives other people inspiration that it can be done. Uh, probably mm-hmm. a little bit tedious in the beginning because you're still adapting to everything, but it is possible. Mm-hmm yeah that's yeah. awesome well if you guys uh where yes where can we find you guys exactly um uh if you guys want more inspiration you guys are so great to talk to you should go follow hope for animals on social media and check out their live streams and visit cactus.sg to learn more about cactus singapore work um and there's their facebook handle right there and i believe their instagram handle popping up in a second there you go uh but guys please follow them they're such great creators using switcher studio to connect with um people they just wouldn't be able to especially during um this time in season <laughs> but guys thank you so much for watching today uh we hope that you have a great day and uh we'll see you soon all right thank, thank you. you thanks for having us <laughs>